Rocket League can be a hard game, and anyone who plays it will agree with that statement. You can pour hours upon hours into this game and stay in the same rank, lose to the same people, and make the same mistakes. It is honestly brutal. It could be enough to turn some people off, or to make them stay and strive to overcome it. However, at the end of the day, the rewarding feeling that you get when you rank up or finally pull off a new mechanic in a game, to the awe of everyone, is unrivaled. Before the video starts, I just wanted to say that it would mean the world for you to subscribe. It doesn't cost anything, it's free, and if you want to, you can turn on notifications to be alerted for future uploads. You don't have to watch them, it just shows them to you in case it takes your fancy. Because of the challenges that come with this game, I've decided to make a video going through the top 3 tips for every rank in Rocket League, to help everyone, not just experienced or beginner players. There is always something to work on no matter what rank you are, even Grand Champs still have massive amounts of room for improvement. Keep in mind it varies from player to player, but from observation, asking people and personal experience, I've collated the top 3 things I believe are the most important to do in each rank. As everyone starts their Rocket League careers at Bronze, I feel it is only fitting to begin there. Before you even start the game, you need to make sure you have the right camera and control settings. It is much easier to start off the right way than change it after several hours. Whilst this is individual preference, I will show you the most widely used settings from high level players. It is important to ensure that your boost is bound to R1 and power slide and aerial are bound to L1. You can also bind aerial left to square and aerial right to circle or triangle, but that is purely optional. In terms of camera settings, you should have the maximum field of view, and most players have their distance around 270, height around 110, angle around 4, and then stiffness is purely personal preference. I won't comment on that. Oh, and make sure you turn goddamn camera shake off, for the love of god please do not leave that on. And you can also turn vibration off as well. Whoa, okay, that was the hard part done. Now I'm moving on to tip number 2 for bronze. Utilise basic training, and I cannot stress this enough. It will build the foundation for your mechanics going forward, and is probably the fastest way to improve as a new player. Just a few days ago I was watching a stream of a new player, and recommended rookie aerial training. And within 30 minutes, I could already see the improvement. He went from missing stationary balls, to getting powerful hits while flipping, into the goals. The third best thing for bronzes to do, is practice using ball cam as much as possible. I know some people that were adamant at lower ranks that free cam was the way to go. Whilst you should use free cam sometimes, you should predominantly use ball cam. If you're one of those people, look at all the pros. They all use ball cam. So save yourself the stress and just use it. Okay, so once you've climbed your way out of bronze, you enter the realms of silver, where players begin to become better. The best thing I can recommend to do at this rank is find a higher level teammate to play with and learn from as this will be the most beneficial thing to do towards advancing your skills. Just expose yourself to what you can learn, then mimic that. On top of this, you just need to play as much as possible. This is where you must expose yourself to as many different situations as possible to build up your knowledge bank and muscle memory so you know what to do in the future. Try to have long two-hour sessions at least a few times a week, and you'll see improvement in no time. And the last thing to focus on in silver is spacing. Try to give your teammates some room. If you see he's close to the ball, don't go near him, let him take it and see what he does with it, because if he whiffs, then you'll be there to back him up. Whereas if you dive in, you take yourself and your teammate out of the game, so you may as well just give the opponents free goals. Once you begin to enter the gold ranks, you are familiar with the game and its basic mechanics. You know how everything works, just not that well. The number one thing I recommend doing is start playing ranked 1v1 if you haven't already. I don't just mean a few games here or there, I mean grind 1v1. It is the best game mode to improve both your mechanics and game sense, as you are liable for any mistake you make and there will be no one to back you up. It will be frustrating, but you have to persist and you will benefit from it. Secondly, you must begin to focus on hitting the ball hard. Try to hit it so that it flies the full field without hitting the ground. The best way to do this is either go into free play and hit it around, or pair up with a buddy in a private lobby and practice hitting the ball across the field to each other. Finally, and arguably one of the most important steps you'll need to take in Rocket League, is finally learning how to fast aerial. I don't mean double jumping and then boosting, I mean double jumping while boosting, and not backflipping. If this is currently a problem for you, try increasing your dodge set zone, making you less likely to backflip. Now, the middle rank, or the so called, I'm a grand champ but stuck in this rank. 
Yes, it's platinum. This is where you begin to see a wide variety of skill levels. Some players are mechanically much more advanced but have very little game sense and IQ, and vice versa. I remember playing a 1v1 against a player that hit ceiling shots consistently, but could not defend, so I won despite being mechanically inferior. So due to this, please do not learn clip resets or ceiling shots before you learn how to save a wide variety of shots or how to dribble. It will be so much more beneficial if you focus on the basics and learn how to do them well first. It goes with the saying, learn how to walk then run. My second tip coincides with this point, and that is to focus on accurate shooting. Use packs such as ground shots or all kinds of shots to practice this, and you will find your scoring rate goes up significantly after a short while. The last idea was recommended to me by a friend, and it is something severely underrated, and that is learn how to adapt in situations. For example, if your teammate is a ball chaser, don't get mad and abuse him, give him space and play defensive. Additionally, if all your opponent does is sit in net, take your time and make sure you put accurate shots on, because if you miss it, it will likely lead to an open net at the other end. Once you have overcome the land of the supposed trapped Grand Champs, you enter Diamond, and things get even tougher. This is around the time where you should be spending a lot of time in free play, hitting the ball around and practicing reading the ball from different positions. I'd say for every minute you spend in a match, another minute should be spent in training or free play. Secondly, you should learn how to rotate properly in every game mode. There is so many videos on rotation, so go and spend some time getting that down. It will prevent double and over commits, maintain pressure and make you feel like you have an extra player on field when done properly. To finish off Diamond, you can now begin to learn advanced mechanics. No, not flip presets yet, but useful advanced mechanics such as flicks, double taps or redirects. These prove useful in online matches to get the edge over your opponents who lack these. Now champ is the rank where you can consider yourself a veteran of the game. If you are in champ, you have an advanced understanding of game sense and mechanics and are truly dedicated to the game. You most likely have at least 500 hours. Sorry for your bronzes, this is usually how long it takes. One thing you need to do is warm up before every play session. If you go into a ranked match having just got on, you will most likely suffer from it, leading to deranking and angry teammates. You should also begin to focus on passing with your teammates. Playing with friends and comms makes it tons easier. As simply good shooting may not be enough to outplay your opponents and score. Also, just the small thing that passing is essential in Grand Champ, so you probably should do it. Lastly, the biggest thing that is wrong with Champ gameplay is consistency. Some players have the mechanics of Grand Champs, but can only successfully pull it off 20% of the time, rendering it absolutely useless. When practicing something, try to perfect it so you can do it 100% of the time, for only then will it actually improve your gameplay. And now we've reached the end. If you are a Grand Champ, you have achieved the highest rank in the game, and you probably don't need any tips, and I'm really not qualified to give them, given that I'm only a Champ to myself. So what I would say is just continually refine your mechanics and keep practicing, as the sky's the limit and you can never stop improving. And that wraps it up for the top 3 tips for every Rocket League rank. I hope you found at least a few things that will be useful to implement into your gameplay, maybe even from the rank you're not currently in. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe. As I mentioned before, it's free, it doesn't lock you into anything, so why not? There will be regular videos such as these every few days. Otherwise, I hope you have an amazing day and thanks for watching. Cheers.